Okay. Okay, then I think we are good to go. Um, yeah, good evening, everybody. I'm um, Philip, and um, I'll be telling you something about uh, using the new Wayland protocol when uh, programming um, client applications. Um, first, a few words about me. I was participating in what? Okay. Uh, I was participating in the Google Summer of Code uh, last year as a student for the Cody project. And I implemented uh, the Wayland backend that will be in Cody version 18, which is uh, the next version. And uh, yeah, with this talk, I want to share some of the experience I gained there with you. Uh, like Lucas before me, this is actually my first time at FOSDEM and my first time giving a talk to such a big technical audience. So I am very grateful for the opportunity and I'm very happy to be here. So about uh, the talk just uh, quickly, I'll give you an introduction to Wayland, but, um, but uh, I'll not go in very deeply into that. And I will be also not talking about Wayland from a client perspective, from, from a user perspective, and also not for motivation uh, um, behind uh, the Wayland design. Um, then I'll show you how the process works for getting a window on screen and um, showing something and uh, getting some input done. And I'll give you some general hints for client development in practice, like how do you go about uh, testing and uh, debugging this stuff uh, before coming to the conclusion. Uh, due the, to the time constraints we have here, I initially, uh, initially applied for a 60-minute talk. Um, but uh, we have uh, 20 minutes now. I will be not giving too many uh, hands-on and in-depth uh, examples, but I'll still give you uh, the basics on uh, Wayland. So to start. Uh, the big picture of uh, Wayland and X. So um, to get some key terms out of the way, uh, what actually is X? I mean, most of you probably uh, know, or um, the question should rather be what is part of the X project. And actually, uh, X is mostly X11, which is version 11 of the X protocol, uh, which is a protocol for communication between uh, graphical applications and a uh, display server. And like, how many of you have used the phrase like, oh no, X crashed, just put your hands up. Yeah, <laughs> quite a few. And that is technically not what you should, should be saying because X is a protocol, right? So uh, what uh, you are meaning is, of course, that the X.org server, which is the canonical server-side implementation of that X11 protocol, has crashed, which yeah used to happen from time to time. Um, and that is actually similar to what, what uh, Wayland is. Uh, the, it's like X11. Uh, it's a protocol that is intended to succeed X11, and it's not actually um, a server. Um, it has also some supporting C libraries, such as the Wayland Client, which I'll be getting into later. And part of the Wayland project is also uh, Western, uh, which is the reference server-side implementation. But it's not uh, like on uh, X, where we have the X.org server, which pretty much everyone is using. Uh, Western is really just for, for reference and for some uh, specific use cases. All uh, big desktop environments like GNOME and KDE, they have their own Wayland server. So to sum up, Wayland is not a piece of software that you can run. So you cannot say Wayland has crashed. That uh, just does not make any sense from a technical point of view. And it's also not quite like X11. Uh, so why isn't it? Um, the, the key difference is um, just listing them up. Um, Wayland servers, which you usually refer to as uh, compositors, um, they do a lot of stuff actually. They combine uh, the display server, uh, the window management, and uh, the compositing functions uh, in one process, which used to be separate uh, with uh, X11, um, the, which has been uh, possible because of lots of work in the, in the Linux kernel on getting uh, the graphics drivers into the kernel and out of the, the X.doc server. So, uh, Wayland is also the scope of the protocol extends a bit beyond what uh, X11 is doing. Um, we are not just looking at like general the desktop use case where we have uh, windows and stuff, but also other environments like uh, in-vehicle infotainment, um, which uh, Wayland um, also has protocols for. And perhaps uh, the, the difference that people talk most about or notice most uh, is uh, that uh, the design is has more um, security inherently uh, than X11 had. For example, there are no general purpose interfaces for uh, interfacing with other windows, for example, manipulating other windows, stealing contents of other windows, or injecting input into other windows. 
and this is uh, by design. Um, but it's not like um, we want to forbid all, all, all the stuff that uh, was possible on X11, it's just that you will have to be doing it differently um, because uh, there should be protocols that support specific use cases and are not like the, the, the shotgun model that you have with X11 where just any client can do pretty much uh, anything. And these use case specific protocols, they are also designed by the Wayland well community, but they are just not there yet because uh, nobody has put enough effort to support these specific use cases. And also the solutions that you end up uh, could be radically different from what you would have done with X11 because uh, the circumstances are different. Yeah, and last but not least, there's also less craft in the, uh, in the protocol because it was designed from, from the ground up. For example, there's no server-side drawing at all, and there's also no, no font configuration, no font rendering stuff. This is all done uh, by, by the clients and not by the server. So if you're looking to implement a Valent client, um, you have two basic options. Besides just saying, I'm just not doing Valent, I will continue with X11 because there's a transition layer which is called uh, x -Valent which works quite nice. But I guess you're here because you want to hear um, about what you would do with Wayland. You could go native, uh, which is what this, this uh, talk is all about. You just uh, um, program for Wayland directly. Um, it is an effort that is comparative, uh, comparable to uh, using uh, Xlib or Xcb for X if, uh, if you've used that. Um, but there are some differences. I mean, it, uh, because um, Wayland has uh, client-side declarations mostly and this is which means that if you want to support windowed mode you want to uh, throw your application in a window then you will also have to draw the window decorations and not only that you will also have to draw the the buttons in the decorations and you uh, must react to button clicks and you must support moving and resizing the window and showing the right cursor on resizing and all that stuff uh, this might become less relevant in the future because there's uh, an effort going on to standardize uh, server-side uh, decorations on Wayland kind of, but uh, it's not there yet and at the moment it's still um, a big problem if you want to uh, have your application support windowed mode. So what my recommendation would be that in all cases that it's at all possible you should be using toolkits, which is uh, the second option. GTK, Qt, uh, EFL, SDL and GLFW, they all have um, quite good uh, Wayland support and um, you just have to do a lot less effort, the toolkits do all the heavy lifting for you, and you also get the benefit that your application will run on a lot of uh, other platforms, and it will also run on X, because if you're doing a native uh, Wayland application with, with no kind of fallback, then your application will just not be running on, on X11. Um, yeah. But I do realize that using toolkits might not be an option for, for everyone if you're doing very specialized software, or if you just you want to write the toolkit. So this is what this talk is about. Okay, after this uh, introduction, um, a brief introduction of uh, the, the uh, um, a more in the look at the Wayland protocol actually, how it works. It's uh, object oriented, which means that you create new objects via the protocol and then call methods on them, which are called requests, or you get um, events from the server. And every function call is uh, associated with an object. There are no like raw function calls. Um, the protocol is defined in, in, in XML files, which uh, the main one is called uh, Wayland.xml, which is uh, shipped with Wayland. And there are some, some additional um, protocols for specific use cases, like the, the in uh, vehicle entertainment stuff, that is uh, part of another repository that's called uh, Wayland protocols. And from these XML files, then the C code that you use to, to interface with Wayland is actually uh, generated. Um, this is also uh, modular which means that the set of interfaces that is available is easily extendable. It's kind of similar to uh, X11 protocol extensions. And yeah, the biggest uh, difference that you will notice at first is that it's uh, completely asynchronous and message-based, which means it's not uh, really request response anymore. The requests are completely fire and forget. Um, and you don't get, uh, you, you can't really ask the server for any state. Uh, the server will tell you when the state changes, and you have to remember the state in the client. Okay, some specific interfaces that you will have to use when you're using Leyland is firstly WL underscore display, which is uh, just the singleton interface that uh, represents the connection to a Wayland server, and you get that just when, when co connecting to a Wayland socket. And um, the other one is WL underscore registry. Um, 
which uh, you derive from WL <coughs> display, and uh, then in, that in turn provides access uh, to all other global edges, uh, objects and global interfaces uh, that you will be using. So it is kind of the, the entry point for everything. And that's also what you see on the right side. You get the WL display, then you call get registry on that, get a registry, and then you get access to all those, those globals uh, that are underneath. And what uh, those globals are uh, will actually vary depending on what capacity you're using and what uh, environment you are using it in. Um, most of these uh, globals are singletons, for example, WL uh, composite has a singleton, and others, for example, WL output, which could be representing a physical monitor, uh, will appear uh, multiple times. If, for example, you have uh, multiple monitors connected, you will get multiple WL output uh, objects that will give you the, the details on those uh, monitors. So, uh, how, do you, how do we use the sum of those globals to actually get uh, a window on screen? It's uh, yeah, not that easy of a process, so I'll just give you the, the high-level overview and not go too much into, into the, the, the details. Um, first, you use the compositor global that I've been briefly speaking about and use it to create, create a surface. And the surface is just yeah, the typical rectangular area of pixels that you can put some content in. Uh, but, you can't, uh, but if you just create a surface, then it won't uh, be displayed because uh, all surfaces need, one, uh, need a role. And, uh, exactly one role uh, that tells the compositor what it should do with the surface and what kind of way it should use it and display it. And uh, what you will use for that is if you just want a regular window on a desktop, then there's an uh, extension protocol for that it is, uh, that you should be using, and it's called uh, uh, xdg, xdg underscore shell. Um, it's uh, still uh, unstable at the moment, and is uh, part of the Valent protocol as repository that I mentioned before. Uh, but it's, it's the de facto standard that you should be using. Um, and uh, the one that is in core Wayland, which is called uh, WL underscore shell, it's effectively deprecated and you shouldn't be really using it anymore. Uh, there's a stable version of XDG shell that's uh, already there, but not many servers are supporting it yet. So for the moment, uh, this is still your, your best bet. You should be using uh, XDG shell uh, version 6. And if it's uh, ever replaced by the stable version, it's just a, 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 a copy and paste job, and you just uh, remove the set prefix, which means unstable, and remove the version at the end, and then uh, you are good to go with the, the stable version. Yeah, so how do you use that? Uh, you get the global, uh, the XTG shell, shell uh, global. You use that uh, to uh, get an XTG surface um, object for the surface that you have uh, created, and then finally call get top level on the XTG surface. And uh, this uh, top-level object is then uh, the role of your surface. And top-level in this case means just a top-level window that uh, the uh, compositor will then put on screen. Yeah, not quite, because uh, the compositor no will not put it on screen unless you put some content into the window. So how do you get uh, the content? There are, um, again, two possibilities. You can render on, on the GPU or you can render on the CPU, <coughs> roughly speaking. Um, if you render on the GPU and use uh, Vulkan or EGL, then you are pretty much covered because that is quite easy to do. The interoperability is, is great. And um, yeah, you don't have to really set up much. If you use uh, the CPU for rendering, then it's a bit more complicated because you have to figure out uh, how to, to get a, a shared memory buffer and how to share that with the um, compositor which is what I just, uh, I'm, I'm indicating here. You create a buffer and ad attach that to the surface. Um, yeah, and it's a bit more uh, involved than, than the rendering on, on the GPU. And for rendering, you could use either you already have your own renderer. For example, when you are developing an, an OpenGL-based uh, game, then you will just uh, use that to, to render the game. Or for 2D drawing, um, you could use Cairo uh, uh, or uh, the, the, the Skia project, which uh, the, the Chromium guys have uh, developed. Okay. Uh, that's it for, for the window. If you do all that, then you will actually have a, a window and screen. And um, you want some interactivity, probably. Um, so it means, how do you get input? Um, there's a concept called uh, a seat, which is a group of some, um, input devices, a pointer, a keyboard, and, and a touch device. And each seat can uh, have at most one of those devices. And you register for the global, uh, then you take the seed, and these seeds can actually be hot plugged at runtime. So you should always be prepared that, that the seed appears or disappears. 
and just uh, your your application should handle that and not just crash then, which would be very bad. And then we are via the seed, you can get access to the pointer, the keyboard, and, and the touch. And for the pointer, there's the, the yeah special thing that you have to take care of setting the cursor. Uh, of when as soon as the pointer enters your window, you have to give the Wayland compositor a cursor that is uh, an image that it has to use. But there is the Wayland client library which handles most of it and loads uh, just the regular old X cursor things. For the keyboard, then the, the server um, sends you just simple key events when something is pressed, uh, but you have to decode them with uh, lab uh, XKB common because the server will also send you the key map that the user is uh, using. Um, so you have to go through that to translate the keys to what uh, actually was pressed. Um, how do you use that stuff actually in C? Because I've, I've not shown you any code, I guess. Uh, there's uh, the C library, which is called libvalent client. <coughs> And um, all the other stuff is currently built on top of that. So it's like, like XCB or uh, XLib. And if you're coding in C, then you should be using that. That's not really an alternative. And you have to use uh, the, binary, the, the executable Wayland scanner for any extra protocols that you are, might be using from, from XML files uh, to get generate the, the, the C code uh, to interface. Um, if you want to integrate this into your event loop, then you should be take care, taking care to use a proper API. So just see the pro documentation if you want to do that. And for starting out, I recommend uh, downloading the source for Western, the reference compositor, and look at these files, simplesshm.c and simplegl.c, uh, which are just uh, demo clients that are very minimal, but do enough that you can just um, show, um, have a window and uh, get, some, get some input. So it's uh, really the best way to start uh, getting your hands dirty. Um, if you want to uh, use threads in your application, then it is supported by the Wayland client, but you have to be uh, careful and take some precautions, which are, again, available in the documentation. Um, there are some bindings to other languages if uh, C is not your thing. Um, I've tried to list the ones that are most like stable at the moment, which uh, you can see here. And, um, in the slides that you download, these are all links to you. You can just uh, click on it if you're interested in that. Uh, but the state of maintenance is, uh, varies between the, the bindings and um, libvalent client is actually your, your best bet if you want just something stable. So um, now you have, say, you have written your client, you want to actually test it. And either you are lucky then, and you are already using Wayland on your desktop, then you just can just run your application. And if not, uh, it's also not a problem because you can uh, run a Wayland compositor uh, on top of X11 or on top of Wayland in nested mode, uh, which is uh, kind of like a Xafir if you have used that uh, on X11. And these are just, uh, this is just a list of um, um, compositors I would recommend you to test on with uh, the recommended uh, versions that you should be using and how to start them in nested mode. And with the environment variable uh, Wayland underscore display, uh, you can um, instruct your application to start on another Wayland display server. It's like the, the X11 display environment variable. So if you want to, if, so if, if you run GNOME normally and want to test on another compositor like Western, then you can just start that in, Western, uh, in nested mode and start your application there. Um, I would always uh, advise you to test at least on Western because it is the reference compositor and it's uh, most strict about uh, the protocol. And you might want to skip uh, KDE and Enlighten Enlightenment for the moment because they don't have uh, a stable released version that supports uh, XTG shell version 6 as far as I know at the moment. But they are uh, working on it. Very useful is uh, setting the environment variable, variable valent underscore debug to 1 when starting your application. Then uh, you will just get on standard error or standard output, I think. Uh, just a trace of all API calls that you are doing on, on the Wayland socket, which is very useful. You see everything you send to the server, you see everything the server sends you back, and can look for, for, for uh, problems and information. And um, if you want to just see what kind of uh, globals What kind of globals and uh, your uh, compositor supports, you can use the Western Info executable, which is a part of Western. But even though it's called Western Info, you can actually use it with, uh, with any compositor to just uh, gather inf information on what kind of interfaces are available. 
Yeah, and since uh, many compositors and also the Valor project in itself are not uh, that uh, well established like X11 yet, uh, if you encounter really weird stuff like while testing like, like this, um, then sometimes the bug is in, in the compositor and you have to be prepared for that. So, to conclude, um, there's a lot more to this. We've only barely scratched the surface here due to time constraints. I haven't talked about stff like a uh, clipboard, a uh, drag and drop, uh, drag and drop uh, sub subsurfaces, or how to really use uh, XCG underscore shell, uh, because it's, uh, it's a lot more complicated than on that slide. And it also has more um, restrictions than, uh, than using just X11. For example, um, if you maximize your window, then the compositor will exactly tell you how big your window is. And if you attach a buffer of any different size, then your connection will just be killed. So if you're not very careful while implementing that, then you're going to run into big problems. You have to design this in from, from the start that you never attach a buffer of uh, the wrong size. Yeah, you should be thinking twice before not using a toolkit because it really helps, helps a lot and saves a lot of effort. Um, and for just some further resources you could be looking into, um, the project homepage of Wayland has the main protocol and the C API documentation. <laughs> If you want to use some extra protocols, uh, then these are documented just in the, in the XML files. It's very human readable, I think. Uh, the blog of Pekka Parlan Parlanen has uh, some in-depth reviews of some technical aspects of uh, Western and Wayland, which I highly really recommend for you, uh, reading. And you, if you have uh, any specific questions or problems, then the Wayland community uh, are very eager to help. You can just uh, ask on the uh, Hashwayland uh, IRC channel on Freenode or at uh, the mailing list. And I also use that to, to great effect during my, my uh, Summer of Code project. And I really want to, to thank these guys because they have been, been really helpful. So you should not be shy to just ask if you have any questions. And again, uh, in the slides, these are just links. So if any of that uh, interests you, you can just download them and click on it. Okay. That's it from my side. Thank you for being here and listening to me. Do you have any questions? Yeah. What is the actual protocol between the uh, LibWayland client and the, and the compositor? Okay. Yeah. Okay, the question was what is the actual protocol between the, the Wayland client and server? It is a custom protocol. And the wire format is documented on, on uh, the web page. And it basically just encodes uh, the, the requests that you send in, into numbers it, uh, that are um, calculated from the XML descrip description. And it serializes that and deserializes on, on the other side. But the documentation is on that is uh, very good if you want to look at the details. It's on the home page. And it's like X11 that can be based either on TCP or sockets or um, okay, the question was whether it's like X11 to uh, the socket support. Um, yeah, kind of. You usually use a Unix domain socket on, on uh, Linux. Uh, but the difference to X is mostly that it's not as network transparent. So you usually can't just use that over a TCP socket because uh, you are sharing uh, file descriptors via the socket. So you need to use a Unix socket. Okay. Okay, the question was that uh, in some project, I, I think in them, I'm sorry. What? We, just, we got a patch for GNUSEP. Uh, for GNUSEP, okay, they got a patch for Wayland support, and uh, in the patch, uh, they, they ex included the generated C code from Wayland Scanner. And the question was whether that uh, is a good thing, I think, and it's not a good thing. You should always be generating the, the C code directly from, from the XML. Um, the uh, protocols are installed system wide, or you if you use custom ones, then you can ship them with your project. But you should not check them into source control because they are generated. You should always be using Valence Scanner to generate them. OK. Any other questions? OK, then that's it. Thank you. Thank you.